You know, it, it's funny now. For years and years, everybody knew, Andy, you were a great coach. But, you know, the Philadelphia talk show host, oh, the big game, Andy, you got to win. Well, you won the big game. So are you, do you sleep just a little better this offseason knowing you got that puppy and nobody can take it away from you? Well, Colin, I'm, not, I'm one of the few chubby guys that doesn't sleep a whole lot. But when I do, <laughs> I've always slept pretty good. So I didn't let anybody, I don't let those things bother me. You know, you have eight, um, one of eight teams with five primetime games. You are the target. Everybody wants you on TV. Your schedule is going to change. How do, is that okay for you? Is that create some obstacles in training and preparing, being on television in different times? Yeah, how great is that, though? I mean, that's almost a reward for uh, the hard work that our guys have put in, and whether it's the coaches or the players, it's, it's a great tribute to the organization and how they handle themselves. So I, I look at it like, let's go, man. Or wherever you want to play, you want to take us to McDonald's, we'll play there. <laughs> it really doesn't it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time. Uh, we, we take it as a... Nice compliment. You have unbelievable continuity. Only the Buffalo Bills slightly have more continuity among players, coaches, assistants than you do. How big of an advantage is that in the year of COVID that everybody's virtually coming back? Well, listen, it's like you. Joy is phenomenal. So I'm lucky to have uh, great assistants that, uh, that just uh, bust their tail and they like being here. So we've been able to keep guys here. Clark Hunt sets it up that way, and and uh, where where it's like uh, uh, you know there's a family atmosphere to it. So some of these guys are younger guys that got some kids, and and in this time right now, just like you said, when uh, things where time is of the essence, it's great to have everybody coming back. And Brett Veach on top of this, Colin has done a great job in bringing uh, players back. So he re-signed a bunch of guys uh, to keep that continuity there. Uh, with the team. You know, Andy, it's really interesting that, you know, the famous line by Bill Parcells, if I'm going to cook the dinner, I want to shop for some food. But I would say even more so in your case, because of your stylistic coaching and your creative nature, it's really important for an Andy Reid to have a great relationship with a general manager because you are different. Um, you don't have a classic system. You're kind of like, hey, let's here, give me the players. You know, this is what I'll do with them. D do you want a lot of say in your personnel at a college or 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 do you just give him what works for you? Or, or do you ever twist his arm? Do you want power in drafting and getting players to work with Patrick? You know what? For for 14 years in Kansas City uh, or excuse me, in Philadelphia, I, I did that. So, I mean, I. I had say on it, and I, I wanted to be involved, and, um, and so I was. And uh, I made the final decisions on things. I got here, and I just wanted to coach. I wanted to get back to the thing that I loved doing most. Uh, you know, Doris was here, who I had a relationship with, John Dorsey. Brett Veach came along with us uh, from Philadelphia, and Brett was an up-and-comer. Uh, and when Doris stepped aside, then, then uh, uh, Brett stepped in and has done an unbelievable job. Pat Mahomes really is here because of Brett Veach and the effort in which he put in to find him. He wore Dorsey at, an eye out on on this kid. And so that's how we ended up taking him. It was just Brett uh, relentlessly hammering us. And he did the same thing in Philadelphia with LaShawn McCoy and uh, and Deshaun Jackson and, and Cox. I mean, all the guys, the major guys there, he was involved with uh, – and responsible for having us take them. You know, it is when you get a Hall of Fame coach like you and a Hall of Fame quarterback talent like Mahomes, uh, you're going to have quite a run here. Um, at some point, you're going to have to pay him some money, and, and then you have to make some decisions on protection, and, and that's the world. But you got about a year and a half, of you should be okay on that spot. But I look at Patrick, and I've seen him in public twice, and the social justice stuff he talked about this week. I, I feel like you're... You guys are so lucky. His personality. He's such a good kid. And I just want you to talk about the value of that beyond having a great arm and being a great athlete. The, the value that Mahomes brings to the franchise as a human being. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as great a player as he is, he's even a better human being. He's smart. 
he gets it. You know, Colin, when you find guys that, that kind of have a pulse on life, uh, even at a young age uh, in which he is, he just he understands and he's able to navigate him through. He's able to navigate through tough situations and uh, wh whether it's in a game and or off of the field. And, and so and he cares about people. I mean, he loves people. He, he wants to you see him sitting at all tables, man. I mean, he can go around the dinner table and talk to anybody. And uh, it's just a it's a joy to be around. Um, and, and the greatest part about this, Colin, is uh, he's so young and he's just going to keep getting better on my end, the football side. He's just going to keep growing and growing. Now, he's won a Super Bowl. Can you yell at him anymore? What if you're upset with him? Can you bark at him? Well, I don't, you know, I really don't have to bark at him too much. We, we uh, I try to communicate the best I can I'm, uh, and, and teach. I mean, that's what that's what we're here to do. And, you know, in, in this day and age, you do too much barking and guys kind of turn you off and then you're not getting in the full message. So I'm, I'm finding a way to uh, ear canal them a certain way, right, and get it in there. <laughs> where we can get it deep in the id and they, they remember it when the, when the clock's running down and, and, uh, and big guys are chasing them. So. You, you are maybe the only coach that's given Belichick fits. And one of the reasons, I, I believe, is because he eats up system guys. But guys that come in every September with new looks and new wrinkles, and Bill hasn't seen it, uh, frustrate even the greatest coaches. So I know in this pandemic, you've been just drawing up plays. I know you. You're sitting up there drawing all this craziness. If I said to you, first snap, September 10th, September 12th, how many new plays have you just sat with your wizard board and drawn up? Well, I, I've got, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's what we do. And so I've had a lot of time to do it and I love doing that part of it. And we've got some good stuff. And the challenge is to keep to keep challenging Patrick and to keep him growing, to give him that opportunity. Players hate to be sitting there stagnant. So we, it, it's one thing you love doing as a coach is just finding that one more thing that you can get to even make them greater than they already are. So uh, that's what that's what we do, and we we enjoy doing it. And I, I've had a lot of time to do it, and we've got some really good stuff, man. I can't I can't wait. I know you're picking the Denver Broncos, but I can't wait to <laughs> jump in and get this thing rolling. <laughs> well, come on, so I I have time to amend my picks, Andy. It's it's June for gosh sakes. All right, all right. I thought I'd put the shirt on to kind of. Remind you, you know that uh, you know that, that it's time to go almost, and, uh, <laughs> and and that you get the right team right. All right, I'll have to readjust that. Finally, had you ever had barbecue before you got to Kansas City? Well, I had, but it was on my hibachi in the backyard in Los Angeles. So I, the, it's a lot different than than it is here. This is uh, big time, and uh, I, I, I'm trying to find one. And this is a real goal. I'm trying to find one that I don't like. So uh, they all they all are phenomenal and terrible for my waistline, but uh, but it's they they take great pride in that here and it's really fun to be around. They do they take our parking lot up here once a year and they have these contests and I, I'm begging to be a judge in one of those. They won't <laughs> let me. I think they're afraid of me eat all the product. <laughs> oh, I love Andy Reid. Great seeing you. Uh, keep grinding away. I'm so happy for you. Say hi to Brett and everybody there for me. I'll do, Colin. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Andy Reid, the great Andy Reid. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.